but first class period. However, I did the silly thing and I didn't change it to video and I didn't realize that till about 10 minutes in. And then Caden Felt sitting over here said, Mr. Crater, did you know you didn't record video today? You just took a picture of yourself and that was it. And I'm like, oh yeah, great, thanks. So here it is again. So uh, here's, here's today's class. Today's class, purpose of today's class is looking at, is looking at run on sentences. So I made this silly little graphic here. I found it, run away from run on sentences. Do you remember talking about or hearing about run on sentences before? Yeah. Kind of, sort of. Now, I'm, I'm putting this in today's lesson in the middle of our biography paper because when I am reading what you've written so far, I'm noticing run on sentence problems. And then I'll say, I'll say to a kid that I'm working on, I'll say, hey, there's a run on sentence here. Do you, do you know how you can fix that? And I get a lot of blank stares. So it's something that, that I'm noticing and I want to help you with. So what is a run-on sentence? So here's another graphic. I thought this was kind of fun. I don't know how you describe this guy, but he's obviously supposed to be a fast runner. What is a run-on sentence? It is a sentence or sentences and phrases joined without correct punctuation. Now, I'm not going to ask you to know these terms, comma, splice, or fuse, but I can about guarantee that next year when you're with Mrs. Beggs, she is going to talk about comma, splices, and fusion. Another run-on sentence problem right here is an overuse of conjunction. Sentences that go on and 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 just end it already. Now, here's this big term to describe that. Once again, it's a term that I'm not going to ask you to remember, not going to quiz you on, but looks more like it would be a dinosaur term than a term yeah. for English, but polysyndeton. All right, so the focus today is working with run-on sentences. How are they fixed? I mean, how do we fix run-on sentences? When I was thinking about run-on sentences and I was thinking about myself as a writer, and how I catch those things in my proofreading, I, I was thinking about speaking and, and listening. And, you know, I don't have any studies to prove this out, but most people speak more accurately than they write. People speak more accurately than they write. Anybody have an idea why that might be it? Why that might be the case? John, what do you think? Why do you think that's true? Because um, writing is boring and there's a lot more like punctuation and stuff combined into it, but when you're just talking, it's just better at it because you don't have to say blah, 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 comma, blah, 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 period. All right, but you know what's interesting, John, is that most people, including, and I was paying attention to what you were saying right there, you paused at places where if you were writing, that's where a punctuation would go. It would either be a period or it would be a comma, and I'm doing that right now. I'm noticing that in myself as I'm speaking that where I pause, that's where a punctuation would go. And you do the same thing. Now, when I was thinking back to why this might be, anybody else have another idea? John, John shared with us his thoughts. Why do you think people speak more accurately than they write? Brenna, what do you think? Because they get distracted when you're talking and writing. And that is something I didn't even think about before, but that's a great answer. Right? Let me repeat it in case you didn't hear it. It's easier to correct yourself when you're writing or when you're speaking than when you're talking. It's quicker. Um, another thought, John. Um, that some people, when you're doing that, uh, when you're writing, you have to actually write the word. Like, if you're saying some like weird word that isn't even a word, you got to figure out how to make that word sound into your writing. Sure. And it's a lot harder than just saying it. It is. Writing is way harder than, than, than speaking. And think about when you learn to talk. Now, it's been a long time since I've had little kids because my kids right now are 29, 26, 23. So I was trying to remember, when did they first speak their first words? But it was really, really young. And then they learned to talk. And some of you, once you learned to talk, you <laughs> never stopped. In fact, some of you, you don't even have to have an answer from somebody else or another question. You just keep talking and talking and talking. We have a lot more practice in speaking than we do in writing. When I write... When I'm editing my writing, I'm listening to myself in my head. In fact, it's, it's almost like I'm reading aloud, only I'm not making sounds. That helps me with my writing. So here's how we fix run-on sentences. You can either make the sentence compound by adding a conjunction, a comma plus and butter or. That's a way to fix some run-on sentences. Or break the run-on sentence into smaller but complete sentences. That's what we're going to work with today. Now, I will tell you, all of these that are up here have a problem. 
none of these sentence examples are correct. They all need to be fixed. Now, like I said, I'm not asking you to remember the terminology of comma splice. I'm just telling you these are comma splice problems. These are sentences that have been smashed together with a comma, but a comma alone did not solve the problem. They have a bigger problem. Today is Friday, comma, I am so glad. I'm telling you that's, that's a problem. That is a run-on, comma, splice problem. Can any of you look at that and go, got it, Mr. Kreider. I think I know how to fix that run-on sentence. And I'll tell you, there are two ways to do it. They're both correct. Two ways to fix this comma splice problem. Today is Friday, I am so glad. Izzy, how would you fix it? You spelled Friday wrong. <laughs> I did do that on purpose, and that'll make sense in a little bit, but thank you for catching that. She said you spelled Friday wrong. Brenna, how would you fix it? I mean, you could reword, reword it. Just... How, would you, how could you do that? I'm so glad it's Friday. Okay, you could, go, you could reword the whole thing. Just kind of start over. How could you work with what's there and fix the run-on sentence problem? John, what's your thought? Today is Friday, yay, and I am so glad. Yes, getting the conjunction and in here, turning this into a compound sentence. Today is Friday, comma, and I am so glad. That's one way to fix it. Anybody have the other? You can make the sentence compound by adding a comma conjunction, or, and I should have had it up here, you can break it into smaller but complete sentences. How could you break this into smaller but complete sentences? Today is Friday. I am so glad. And what would you do? How would you change the punctuation? Fri after Friday, instead of the comma, it'd be a period. Yes, put a period there. I am so glad. Now, there are two more examples. going to do them real fast. Friday is a funny name. I already fixed that one. Why is it called that? I fixed that last class period. So that one is correct. Here's a comma slice. I'm good at English. I shouldn't use that word. That's kind of what Izzy said before. She said you spelled it wrong. So this is a comma splice problem. This one I had already fixed last class period and didn't, didn't get it back to the, play, the problem it was before. How would you fix this comma splice problem? I'm good at English. I shouldn't use that word. Bristol's wondering. I'm not sure, Mr. Kreider. I think I know, but I don't want to be wrong, so I'm not sure that I want to say it out loud. Is that what you're thinking, Bristol? Izzy, how would you fix that one? Yes, but, comma, but, I shouldn't use that word, or comma, and, I shouldn't use that word, or change the comma to a period and make it two separate sentences. Now, these are fused. This means it is two sentences that are smashed together without any punctuation. Saturday, I will paint. Sunday, I will go to church. All right, I see a new hand. Ready? Give it a shot. Yep, Patricia says a period after paint. Saturday I will paint, period. Sunday I will go to church. Good job. That's one way to fix it. How about the other? All right, Bristol, you're brave. Saturday I will paint, comma, and Sunday I will go to church. Great. All right, here's another one. We will eat out Friday night. Saturday we will make pizza. Anybody else new? We will eat out Friday night. Saturday we will make pizza. That's a problem. Patricia again. A period after night. We will eat out Friday night, period. Saturday we will make pizza. Going to move on to the next one. I told you I had to cut back because I had too much stuff planned for today. This is the big old problem that go on and on and on and on and on. Honestly, kind of like John did before when he was give us, giving us example, he spoke in a long run on sentence. I will shovel if it snows, and I might make a snowman, or I could build a fort, and then I could scare my wife. Now, you would never speak like that, I would hope. I will shovel if it snows, and I might make a snowman, or I could build a fort, and then I could scare my wife. It just doesn't even sound right. Now, this is a run-on of the polysyndeton type. Landon, any ideas on how we can fix that? No? All right, give a good listen. Jesse, any ideas how to fix that? What do you think, Jesse? 
I will shuffle the zip snow, comma, and die my make a snowman, period. Wait. Noah, good so far. Now what do you have to do after the period after snowman? Delete the or. Delete the or. Yes. All right. We got to get everybody involved here. Y'all have your Chromebooks. Yep. Get them out. Get them logged in. Get into Schoology. How do you your Chromebook, Schoology, quarter two. Michael, get off the slope. You are looking for in Schoology quarter two, day 62, run on sentences. Schoology Day 62 run on sentences. And when you're in there, you're going to get this slideshow, the same exact slideshow. You need to get down to the slides with the inspector guy. And I want you to fix at least one of the three. Of the comma splices, fix one. Of the fused, fix one. Of the polysyndeton, fix one. You don't have to fix all three. Fix one in each of those three slides. And then should we highlight which one you did? I'll know which one. I'm pretty sure I will know which one. You don't have to fix all three, fix one. And remember that one comma splice issue, I had already fixed one. So Brenna said, what if I wanna fix all of them? The answer is, if you have time to fix all of them, please do. Because they make you mad. Now, when you open this up, if you haven't realized it by now that it can be really tiny, and if it's too tiny, you know how to make that Schoology screen bigger, right? I'm done. Mm -hmm. Go to the magnifying glass. When you hover over it, it says zoom. And then you can change the percentage and make it bigger if it's too hard to see. You know how to do the ad user, right? Yeah. Fix one or more. Don't submit it yet because you're not done yet. It's easier to do sentences in isolation than it is in paragraphs. So there are two paragraphs that I want you to work with. So when you have finished doing one repair and for each of those slides, this one right here, this paragraph has issues. See if you can find the issues in this paragraph. And then this one. Take a look here. I, I, I want to interrupt you for just a, just 30 seconds. Look at the screen for 30 seconds. Look, 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 look. This paragraph where the question marks are, you need to fill in your own answers. Then when you fill them in, this paragraph is full of run-on sentence issues too. Fill in answers that work for you. So far this year has been question mark. Now, I don't care if you want to talk about your school year, your year at home, doesn't matter. All we need is information. Um, so fill in something. This, this year has been common, ordinary, full of surprises, different, whatever. Whatever works for you. I was surprised about, what is something about this year that has surprised you? Now sometimes kids' minds just get stuck, and there was a kid in last class period that said, I don't know. 
I said, well, did you know we were going to go on a bike trip this year? No. I said, well, that's something that surprised you. Um, did you know we were going to work with Chromebooks so much? No. Well, then that's something that surprised you. Did you know we were probably going to go to a movie as a grade close to Christmas? Oh, wait. No one's told you that. So that surprised you. So whatever works for you, then fix the run-ons and know this. You're going to share that paragraph. Know that you're going to share that last paragraph with somebody in a few minutes. So put down things that you're willing for other people to hear. All right, I'm wondering if you're stuck, but hopefully in 10 minutes, you'll be ready to share. If you're not working on that last paragraph yet in my year so far, you better jump down to that. Even if you're not done with the others, get down to that last paragraph. Because this is the one that I want you to share with other people in just a couple minutes here.
how about in three minutes? We're ready to share in three. Sure. Now make sure in this last paragraph, you don't just put in information, but you fix the run-on sentence problems. Because it's full of run-on sentence problems. One more minute, then I want you to share with someone. So do you have those questions? Do you have those questions that you're ready to answer? Again, do any of those have questions? Yeah. I'll help you with that. In fact, we're not to we're not to that paragraph yet either. All right, now I know what it's like when you're working on something and some, somebody interrupts you and says stop and you're in the middle of something. It's not pleasant, but I need you to stop what you're in the middle of right now. You ready? Can you look my way? Look my way. I want to see your eyes. I see most of your eyes. Not all of your eyes, Landon. All right, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to share with someone. Now, we, we did this a while ago. We had, a, we had a lesson on active listening and what it means to be an active listener. I don't want to repeat that whole lesson, all right? But we, we did that. And to be an active listener, you need to give the person, you need to give their work your full attention, all right? You're not doing other stuff. That's being an active listener. And then please give them, Owen, you with me? Give them at least one comment of feedback, of kind feedback. Maybe something was interesting to you about what they wrote. Maybe they did a good job of catching the run-on sentences, but some positive and kind piece of feedback, all right? Find somebody, go. Read your paragraph, your information, and your fixes of run-ons. Do it, go. Aubrey, have anyone? Can you come up here and join Michael? The one, just the last paragraph, the one that you put in the information. Aubrey, can you come sit here and share with Michael? Yes, Aubrey? Can Aubrey share with me? 
Aubrey, can you come sit here and share with Michael? Yeah, you three can do it. That's fine. All right, read to each other, read paragraph. Let them look at it too. Read it, look at it. Read it out loud. Don't just shove it in front of them and say, read it. Read it to them, please. Back at your own spot in 30 seconds or less, please. Yeah. All right, 15 seconds, and I want your full attention. see you down there. You ready in two? Yeah, I'm waiting for you. All right. So this run-on sentence thing, this issue that lots of kids have, um, the goal here is not just to be able to do it on slides about stuff that I've made up or you've added information. The goal here is that in your paragraphs, the biography that you're writing up, that you're aware of run-on sentences and taking care of them in your paper. Landon, you with me? 
the other thing is when when we're working with each other when you're proofreading for each other when when you ask me to read your stuff and if I say hey did, look at this do you see a run-on issue here because it's it's a common issue with a lot of people and it's something that I want to help you get better at and I know mrs. Beggs will work with you at an extra too so the goal is to, to, to make sure that this information, this learning, is able to be put into practice in your paper. You need to submit this, because I want to see it. The only way I can see this is if you submit it in Schoology. So make sure that if you're done with it all, that it's submitted. And I think uh, it's a Friday. It's a Friday. By the way, somebody, I guess it was Izzy, she said, Mr. Crowder, you spelled it wrong. But do you know why people call it Friday? And I don't know when it got started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 it's Friday, and it's just kind of, I don't even know when that term started to come into existence. For me, I didn't know about it till not all that long ago, but it kind of works and it's kind of fun for me. Yesterday, when we were working on that biography paper, um, you did a great job with it. You did a great job with the work time. But I just thought we needed to take a break from that. We needed to mix it up. And this is, this is some skill work that I just wanted us to do. So we have about seven minutes until I would officially say that's your two-minute warning and we can be done for today. But it's Friday and I want to be done for today right now. So you have Friday fun seven minutes of time. So to those of you that like to juggle, want to juggle, you can do that. If you just... If, if you just want device time, you can have that. But we're done. Good week.